everybody remembers that old saying, a man's home is his castle. But a lot of people forget the other part of that saying, that a man's castle is his greatest weapon to conquer his enemies, subjugate their peoples, and to leave in ruins the civilizations that once dared oppose him. Yeah. Old-timey expressions, they're fun. Anyway, in AoE 2 DE, one of the most important buildings in the game is the castle. Protected by its high hit points and armor, volleys of arrow fire, and able to unlock some of the most powerful siege units in the game, and not to mention unique units and unique technologies. Virtually any game that makes it into the Imperial Age is going to be decided by whose castles control key resources and choke points on the map necessary to sustain your large Imperial armies. But that's not all. Perhaps you frequently wake up screaming in the middle of the night after having had bad dreams about castles being dropped outside of your walls while you're only halfway up to feudal age. Well, that wasn't a dream. It's called Arena. And yes, it is a nightmare. In this video, I discuss the roles performed by castles and what technologies make them better able to perform those roles. By the end of this video, I hope that I'll be able to bring you closer to victory so that that way, when you go out there on the ladder and you're making castles, expanding your army across the map, you'll be able to get out there, take home the gold star, and get after it. All right, everybody, so before I jump into the tier list, as I do with the vast majority of my tier list, I want to start out give you a sense of what my ranking criteria is. And this is going to be dependent on really the purposes that castles serve, first of all. And so I see castles serving six basic purposes in the game. The first one, and perhaps the most important one, is map control, right? Castles are able to lock down and control key points of the map so that when games get into later stages, right, as your economy expands, you can actually defend your civilization, capture resources, take key wood lines, and that's very important for sustaining your late game army. So it's a critical component of your, your, your macro strategy in the late game, right? Now, the second aspect here is castles are also really important to castle drop, right? Castle dropping is a very common strategy, especially on, on closed maps where you try to get up to the next stage quickly put a castle in somebody's face, cause them a lot of discontent, right? Take that forward position and keep the pressure on your enemy. Meanwhile, back home, your economy is presumably not being touched and you can play a lot more cleanly. So castle dropping is really important and that is something that I'm also going to think about in this tier list. Now, it is worth noting that castle dropping is usually reserved a bit more for play with closed maps, right? And so on maps like Arabia, which are also pretty common, you don't tend to see it as much. You don't tend to see it on, in open team games, but say some a map like Nomad, for instance, right? Nomad would be an example of a like a non-closed map where castle dropping is incredibly common. So it's really important and we're going to keep it in mind. Now, the third aspect here, it's kind of the opposite of castle dropping, base defense, right? Putting a defensive castle in your base helps preserve you from being raided and that can mean a lot 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 to your economy so base defense is very important as well a fourth aspect that's kind of related to castle dropping and maybe even map control is trebuchet production and also a place to stage your trebuchet attacks so trebuchets are very expensive right and they're only created at castles so the only way you're going to get trebuchets, which are only available in Imperial Age, and it's one of the most important units in the game, is to, is to create them at castles. So that's going to be pretty important. And not only that, but you typically, because they're so expensive and they're very immobile, they have to pack and unpack, you want to make sure they're defended. And setting up your trebuchets at a castle, where you have that castle being able to help defend your trebuchet, probably along with a small squad of units as well is very important so that's a po an important aspect we're going to keep in mind for our tier list now i will say two things that i'm 
really not going to be factoring in in this video but castles are also used for and i'm going to tell you why i'm gonna actually save that for other videos is the training of unique units i already have a video i did on the best unique units in the game and then also researching unique technologies um that is a beast of a discussion already i will say the way that i will factor in technologies in this tier list is technologies that affect right some of these particular aspects like particularly ones that do affect your trebuchets are going to be pretty important because again we're thinking about what castles do the building itself right and technologies that help castles right take map control help you perform castle drop get out trebs etc those are things that we are going to keep in mind the sixth thing here, right, and again, it's a bit more marginal, but it actually can have a big impact on the game, is healing large numbers of units, right? Uh, monks can only heal one unit at a time, right? That would be a really interesting civ bonus if you could heal multiple units at a time with a monk. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just something for the devs. Um, but castles, right, you can garrison, I think, 20 units at a time and heal them, and then that's really nice in the late game because you have much bigger armies that have often sustained a lot of damage. So... Those are the six criteria. One through four, I think, are the most, most important. Again, technologies, I'm going to save a longer discussion on that for other videos, but I will factor it in uh, in a kind of niche way. And the healing Unix. So, what are the most important aspects here? Right, I'm going to put my ranking characteristics on screen. And the truth is that the top three in this, or maybe even the top four, actually, uh, having your hit point bonuses bracer siege engineers and heated shot are all very very important uh but honestly the hp bonus ranks well above them all and i'm going to show you a video or you know i've got a little bit of content on that so let's actually go into the editor and take a take a look all right, so I want to actually look at the HP because the thing about HP, right, it's not to nerd out or anything, but the numbers actually are pretty important here. And I'll demonstrate that why, particularly when I'm going to talk about Siege Engineers. So I'm going to start off, right, a Civ that only gets, well, I say it differently, a Civ that gets none of the building HP upgrades, no masonry, no architecture, no hoardings, right, has 4,800 HP. We can see that a Civ that only gets masonry right gets up to 5280 and then gets a little bit of uh melee and pierce armor and is also getting some extra building armor uh that you're kind of seeing in the background there are videos about that out there so you're getting a little bit of a bump but because siege weapons do so much of their damage in large chunks the building armor increases are not as big for most siege weapons when it comes to actually your other production buildings, defending them from, say, you know, masses of knights that are destroying things, it matters a lot more. And if you have masses of knights hanging around your castle, destroying things, I suppose that it would definitely matter there. But I think in most real game scenarios, if you're in that position and you're not doing anything about it, you're probably already in a really losing situation. So... I, th I think that the thing to focus on in terms of castles here, right, is the fact that uh, the HP really matters so much because you can just get murder holes and scare off units that are uh, that are that are melee units that are hanging around your castle. Now, if we take a look at our next castles here, right, there's one civilization in the game, Vietnamese, that only gets hoardings, misses masonry and architecture, and it is about 5,800 HP. We can see very interesting if we take a look at a civ that gets masonry and architecture but no hoardings they have the same hp right so that's worth noting but remember right because of the extra armor from masonry and architecture you're going to have a little bit more armor in the background here it's pretty marginal right and it's uh and we can think of these two castles as being more or less on par with the masonry architecture being a bit better now, if we look at masonry and hoardings, right, we can see now we're crossing that thick, that 6,000 HP threshold, right? Take a look at the civilizations that get all three, right? Now we're crossing the 7,000 HP threshold, and we have some building armor in the background, so this is really, really nice. And last, but certainly not least, uh, the civilization of the Byzantines, 
doesn't get masonry and architecture. They do get hoardings and their buildings get extra HP as you go through the ages. And we actually cross the 8,000 HP threshold there. Now, one of the reasons in this video why I am going to consider Siege Engineers and the ranking characteristics is because it really does matter in a lot of cases in terms of how many shots your castles can take. But it's actually not a linear relationship. So I'm going to throw up the, uh, the some of the testing I did and the math on it so you can see that when we take a look at the sieves that right don't get any HP upgrades and then ones that just get masonry, we can see that you're taking two less shots. And if we look at our much better castles where you get all of the upgrades and the Byzantines, you're also taking two less shots, right? So that's a pretty big improvement in terms of effectiveness for siege engineers when it comes to trebuchets. Now, if we take a look at our sieves there in the middle, right? We see that they are taking actually only one less shot there. Um, so that's a that's pretty noteworthy, right? Your effect, your efficiency is actually not improving as much. Uh, by get, if you're an opponent getting Siege Engineers, or to say it a different way, right, you're not suffering as much against the Siege Engineer Trebs, right? So that's the importance, right, of having, you know, uh, hoardings for one, or at least having both the HP armors or masonry and hoardings, right? That does put you in a much, much better situation. Okay, so we saw, right, HP, as you can tell, is massive. Siege Engineers is also having an impact as well. Um, Bracer, I think, is an important technology here because, again, when we think of map control, the more range that you have, right, the more of an area you're going to be able to control. And this is important not only on land maps, but also water maps as well, where you have really congested sea lanes. It can be difficult to move around. And so being able to have that extra range is pretty important, actually. This is another reason why heated shot is important as well, is that Building castles, right, on the shores of your base when you're playing islands or maybe other hybrid maps where there's naval warfare involved uh, is very common. In fact, it's probably indispensable for preventing uh, enemy fleets from landing, from being bombarded by the shore. Um, you know, I mean, you're still going to be outranged usually by, say, cannon galleons and things like that. But... Having your castles is really important because it's a place for your ships to retreat to. And that's why having heated shot actually is so important because it massively increases the amount of damage that castles and even towers and things like that are doing. So heated shot is really, really important for maritime play. It's not having any effect in land maps. So it is important. I don't want to forget the water here. I think a lot of times in games we tend to forget the water and we forget water and yet there are you know, many, many hybrid maps that involve uh, that involve naval warfare. So we want to factor it in. Uh, a bit lower on the list, things like treadmill crane to improve your building work time can be good. Uh, you don't see it researched all that often, but if you can get it, then you can get more castles up easier. I think that's a 20% efficiency increase. Herbal medicine is going to improve the healing of the castle, like by six times, like a six-fold increase. It's actually pretty important. And you, there's been some pro player games actually... I think uh, Viper has made use of herbal medicine uh, to a lot of success, actually. It's got some notice, so we'll think about that. And I will say, right, unique un unique bonuses, or rather, yeah, unique civilization bonuses. We're just going to have to factor in case by case. And the last thing, too, if there's, to a smaller extent, I will also think about at least unique units in one way in this video. That if we have unique units that can deal with, say, siege ram pushes, because those are the two tip the trebuchets and siege rams and then bombard cannons as well to another extent are the units that are the biggest threats to your castles and so if you have a unique unit that can actually deal with a siege ram that's pretty important actually um i mean it, it helps a lot it probably depends on the, the the unit so we'll go ahead and take a look at that so with all that being said right i've got my notes and i actually am going to do the four new sieves as well based on their projected tech trees though uh the indians are becoming the hindustanis and i don't think that they have any changes so it's really kind of the three new sieves uh and so yeah let's go ahead and 
just jump into the tier list right here. So, okay, we got the tier list set up. Let's start off with the Aztecs. Aztecs are going to start first, but they're going to fall on their face right here at the starting line. Coming in last, you're missing all of the HP upgrades, masonry, architecture, and hoarding. Even though you have Siege Engineers, Bracer, that's nowhere near enough to get you there. You saw from the stats that their castles are really just incredibly weak. So uh, definitely a one star here. And I should say actually from the outset, part of the reason I'm using a sort of a star criteria is that there's actually a lot of variation in castle quality, I think. And I think that going from a to, I think going to this kind of criteria where I can have a bit more variation and not, you know, be in like letters like G and H and and crazy things like that is just uh it's just more visually appealing now next up we have the berbers and the berbers are a sip that actually surprised me with the quality of their castles i'm gonna give them a four star and there are uh, quite a lot of reasons why right you're getting masonry hoardings so you're getting those six six thousand hp castles bracers siege engineers heated shots really nice to have um, treadmill crane can help you crank those bad boys out but really the thing that takes the berbers i think into the four star tier is that you have kasba as a unique technology and that allows your castles and your teammates castles to all work faster that is going to increase your trebuchet production substantially if your teammates are making unique units that's gonna have an effect there researching conscription which is something that everybody researches at the castles the vietnamese get it for free um but yeah like that is a, uh, and that's a, a a slow upgrade too so that's actually really important and so to me i think that's an easy four star castle now when we go down on our list to the bohemians i'm going to have to put them at a two star and we're just going to edit the video a little bit on the fly we improvise in this channel and bohemians are a two star you're only getting masonry and architecture right no hoardings you also like siege engineers and heated shot so your trebs are going to struggle you're not going to be able to control water as effectively the thing for me that does keep them right, and maybe is perhaps an argument for three star, is that Bohemians do get the fast, the free stone mining upgrades. So you can actually crank out castles and gather that stone a little bit earlier than your opponents. I think it's kind of tough. Um, the, the real problem to me is just, we might come back and revisit this one. The real problem to me is just when I compare it to the other sieves in that category, I just think it falls short. So. Let's reserve judgment on Bohemians for now. We'll see if we come back to it. So, next up on our list is the Britons, or are the Britons? Is the Britons, are the Britons? That's many of them. It's one sieve, but many people, right? I don't know if that's plural or not. Anyways, grammar discussion aside, Britons to me are actually an easy five-star sieve in this regard. You get all the HP upgrades. You have Bracer, you have Siege Engineers, you have Heated Shot, right? The only thing you're missing is treadmill crane, which is not as big a deal. But the thing that really takes it to the next level is the Warwolf technology. You have some of the best trebs in the game. They don't miss, so you can win. Once you have Warwolf, you can win basically any treb war. You're doing the splash damage, so you can take out masses of units even. This can help when you're, let's say, somebody has a lot of repair villagers, right? And you want to take them out. You can have great splash damage. I, I think I think Britons are are definitely a five star castle and uh, and that's pretty uncommon in this tier list that you're, you're gonna find so let's keep going to find out next we have the Bulgarians and Bulgarians surprised me a bit too I think I'll put them in the three and a half stars so when we look at the Bulgarians what we see is that they have masonry and hoardings which is nice they have Bracer, which is great. They have Siege Engineers and Heated Shot, which is also good, right? But, and I will say that as well, the other thing that they're kind of getting in their favor here is that because their town centers are cheaper on stone, you can have a bit more stone than your opponents, right? I don't think, so they profile actually a lot like the Berbers, but I just think the Berber bonus for the castles is actually really, really important. The cheaper TC bonus is one where 
it is really only affecting you if you are putting up town center if you excuse me if you're putting up a bunch of town centers and also trying to get for a castle which definitely happens especially if you're going to say like uh, boom on a map being able to go like three four tcs and have a decent chunk of stone left over or at least not, not having to mine it is pretty important but if you're going to say do like a castle drop something like that mm, it's probably not helping you as much because you're probably only playing one town center anyways and the other aspect of this is if you're making defensive castles Usually with Bulgarians, you're going to want to make Kraypost anyways, so I don't think it's having as much of an effect in-game. Now, if we take a look at the Burgundians, I'm going to put their Burgundians as a four-star. You know, you're getting masonry, architecture, and hoardings. You have Bracer, right? So you have all of the HP and armor upgrades. That's great. But you are missing Siege Engineers and Heated Shot, and that is a bit of a downer. Uh, Burgundians tend to rely more on their Bombard Cannons anyways, so, you know, again, I don't think it's having as much of an effect, but Bombard Cannons are not as good as Trebuchets at destroying buildings, right? Bombard Cannons, they can do it, obviously, but... And the Burgundians are getting extra damage on their Bombard Cannons, but again, we're not factoring into their castle, that's just something that's helping compensate for a weakness at the castle missing heated shot too right you're just gonna have a little bit you know with the hp you're still gonna be able to control water well if you know you find yourself in that situation but heated shot is something that you are missing out on next up we have the burmese and burmese are gonna jump right into our two and a half star uh you're getting masonry and architecture siege engineers bracer Heated Shot, Treadmill Crane. I mean, you're getting a lot of stuff. You just really just don't have the HP to keep up. And HP is so important that I think we have to flag civilizations that are missing that pretty heavily. Unless they have a really nice bo bonus to compensate for that. And Burmese don't have it. They just have kind of all the things you need. And so that to me is the perfect definition of kind of an average castle. All right, next up we have the Byzantines. And Byzantines should really come as zero surprise are going to be a five star you just have so much HP. Not only that, but you have Bracer as well. I actually think one of the, the low-key strong bonuses for Byzantines, especially with their castles, is having free town watch and town patrol. So when it comes to map control, especially in Castle Age, right, you're going to have a lot of vision. And that can really help out a lot because information is king. So you're going to want to factor that in mind now it's worth noting that byzantines for all of the hp they're also missing a lot right siege engineers heated shot herbal medicine right now your monks heal faster but again if you're healing large groups of units right you're gonna to have to make multiple monks where it's free to uh to garrison them in your castle so byzantines aren't perfect uh but but the hp bonus is just so strong that it overcomes a lot of those other weaknesses. So we're going to have to give it to them. Next up, we have the Celts. And Celts are kind of surprised me too. I'm putting them right up in the three and a half star category. You're getting masonry and hoardings, which is very good. You get siege engineers, which is nice. You are getting heated shot, which is good as well. You have the stronghold technology, which increases the firing rate of your castles. I did a little bit of testing with this and... I just did not find it to be all that effective at all, at least in like castle versus castle fights. Sometimes, you know, you're trying to put up a forward castle and your opponent's getting a defensive castle up and both of them get up. Um, you know, I mean, the arrow fire from castles is already a pretty strong disincentive. More arrow fire, I don't think is adding that much. And the real problem is that Celts are also missing Bracer. And that to me is what's keeping them from getting up into that four-star category, right? The fact that they miss Bracer is what means that, like if you match them up, say, with a with a Bulgarian castle, right? At least in the testing that I did, the Bulgarian castle actually wins pretty comfortably in the kind of a castle v. castle fight, which to me says something about the actual damage output that's being done. And so again, I didn't test it substantially, but I just don't think it's enough to move them into that next tier. The Chinese, the Chinese, unfortunately, they're going to be our first two-star sieve. Uh, you're 
you miss out on hoardings and you miss out on siege engineers and heated shot it's pretty disappointing actually at least you get bracer so you can control a bit more area but again masonry and architecture it just doesn't quite cut it humans also are going to find themselves in this same category but they do have masonry and hoardings which is a lot better you do get heated shot but you're missing bracer and siege engineers and that to me it just means you're controlling so much less space and your trebuchets are going to be so much weaker by comparison in many cases that i i just i just can't see putting them in in that two and a half stars i think it's really close i think if they got some sort of well so one of their bonuses is that your allies can make kip checks at castles for free 10 of them you know what humans i'm i'm feeling merciful today i gotta say and maybe that i've i've so rarely seen that have an effect in team games but i could imagine that if you're certain civilizations it could and maybe it's the little oomph to get them over the hump so let's call them a two and a half star sieve and and just be done with it all right humans you convinced me next up we have the ethiopians and ethiopians are going to keep us in this two and a half star realm you know you're getting masonry and architecture no hoardings siege engineers bracer heated shot right again it's pretty average now franks here's where we get an interesting discussion franks i am going to and this is so hard but i think i gotta put them in the four and a half star category right you're getting all your hp armor upgrades you do get siege engineers but you're missing heated shot and bracer so you're not only are you going to be controlling a little bit less territory but if you're on a water map right you're not going to be providing as much of a safe haven for your ships that need to say get away from an enemy fleet now the thing that really brings i think frank's into the consideration for a five-star sieve is the fact that your castles are 25% discounted. And so you can just do some amazing castle drops. I mean, really amazing castle drops. And that, if we were just talking about castle drops here, folks, Franks are easy five-star sieve, probably the best in the game. But again, we have to think also about the late game and controlling territory and you know, making sure that your economy that's expanded, your villagers are going to be safe so that you can sustain late game army production, right? Getting raided in the late game is, especially on open maps like Arabia, that's how you lose oftentimes uh, with Hussar raids and that sort of thing. Being able to keep your villagers safe and areas of the map safe, controlling resources really is more important. And I think it's, I think it's m more important than being able to 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 castle drop and you combine that with a being a bit downgraded in naval warfare to me that's four and a half stars I, I think i think it's i think it's so close but hey maybe you disagree with me in the comments right drop a comment below and uh and make your case next up we have the goths and goths are another this are going to be another two star it's kind of meh you know, you're getting masonry and architecture. Bracer and heated shot's actually nice, but no siege engineers. It's just masonry and architecture, as we, you know, you saw from the 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 trebuchet firing list that I put earlier. It's just not cutting it. Next up is Huns, and Huns are unfortunately I think Huns. Let's think about this. I think Huns have to go in the one and a half star. My, so you only get masonry. You miss siege engineers. You miss heated shot. You don't even get herbal medicine. You do get bracer. So you, you can at least control areas. The thing that may push Huns into the, into the two star area is the fact that their trebuchets are so accurate. And it says 30% accurate. But when it comes to actually attacking other trebuchets and winning those kind of treb wars... 
I think that there's a video out there that says they're much closer to like 60% accurate. You know what? 60% accuracy, that's a pretty big jump because if you've ever been in a treb war, trebuchets miss other trebuchets a lot. Like a lot, lot. So that's pretty massive, actually. Um, that's only enough. I think we're being generous here. I think giving them two stars is probably about as... That's about as good as we can give them. All right, next up we have the Incas. And Incas, I gotta say, this is another one I was very surprised at. You know, when we look at the Incas, they have they have masonry and hoardings, siege engineers, bracer, right, heated shot, and you're getting a cost discount, which is also really nice. It's a 15% cost discount, pretty close to the Franks. The thing to me that when I look at the Franks and the Incas, that really puts the Franks in a totally different tier is the fact that you're getting architecture as well with the Franks, and you're not getting that with the Incas, and again, HP is king here. Next up, we take a look at Indians, or what will be known in the future as the Hindustanis. Um, I'm going to put them at three and a half stars. I really think that they are pretty quality. You have uh, masonry and hoardings, siege engineers, bracer, heated shot. Um, wait, no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. You have, but yeah, 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 masonry, hoarding, bracer, siege engineers, heated shot. Okay, I am looking at the right thing. Uh, you're missing treadmill crane, right? It was a pretty solid castle here, right? Not quite good enough for a four star, right? But still pretty good. Next up, we have Italians. And Italians, for me, are going to go in the four star category. Um, you're getting all your HP armor upgrades. You get heated shot. You get bracer, right? And that's great because you're playing a lot of water maps with Italians. You're just missing siege engineers. And that's something to me that is a big downgrade. And that's definitely the kind of thing for me that take you from like a four and a half to book you down to a four but again you got the hp you can control the map still pretty good now if you look at the japanese japanese get pretty interesting as well with japanese i think i also gotta put them in this two star category it's actually kind of a similar situation to the huns though actually you know what actually i think they're a two star two and a half star and I'll tell you why. It's be it's really on the, the back of their trebuchets. So you only get masonry, which really sucks. And you miss heated shot, which Japanese are a pretty common water sieve. And that's not good, right? But you're getting bracer. You're getting siege engineers. That's the kind of stuff that could put you, move you, start to move you into that two-star category, maybe. But the thing for Japanese, though, is that you have the Kataprudo technology in Imp that increases the speed at which your trebuchets pack and fire. This is pretty massive. Japanese trebuchets are some of the best in the game once you have that technology researched. It's a bit pricey, so it can be hard to get to, but if you do get to it, I've really seen it work in a lot of late game settings, and trebuchets can be a really important part of the Japanese army for that reason. And trebuchet is firing faster. Packing faster is might even be the best part because there's a lot of times when you know, your army is starting to get overwhelmed. You need to back up. And with the Japanese, you're probably going to be able to save your trebs in a way the other subs might not. And treb trebs are so expensive. It's pretty important. So I, I think that's enough two, two and a half star. But it's worth noting, right, that this doesn't mean that their castles are good. They're just very specialized to one particular task. But that's enough to get them into two stars, two and a half stars. Next up, we have the Khmer. And... Khmer have a pretty darn good castle. I'm going to put them at four and a half, folks. So you're getting all the HP armor upgrades, Siege Engineers, Bracer, and Heated Shot. Like that is, that's pretty nice, right? You're missing Treadmill Crane and you're missing really some other kind of bonus. But honestly, hey, you have pretty much everything you need and, and, and you're going to have very, very strong castles. Not going to lie, pretty, pretty darn good. Next up is Koreans. Koreans are a sieve that I have really, really, really mixed feelings about. I'm going to put them... I'm going to put them in the three and a half stars. And... And the reason here is that... Because... So... Koreans don't get hoardings, which is a major downgrade. But you are getting Siege Engineers, Bracer, and Heated Shot. That's nice. But 
thing to me that takes them out of the three and puts them in the three and a half is that you have the faster stone miners. And castle dropping potential, therefore, with Koreans on maps like Arena can be really incredibly strong. And we don't want to discount that too much. Um, I think it's kind of a pedestrian sieve, honestly, but the castle dropping potential is really massive here. And and they're one of they might be a top five castle drop sieve. And that, that happens a lot in games. So if you're playing arena or nomad or something. So it's worth I think it's worth giving them three and a half. Next up we have Lithuanians, and Lithuanians are gonna take us into the four-star category as well. Uh, you're getting all your HP armor upgrades, heated shot, bracer, you're missing siege engineers. So again, it's kind of the same story as Italians. Magyars are gonna keep us in the three and a half stars, right? Um, you're getting masonry and hoarding, bracer, siege engineers, heated shot, right? Um, you know, it's also worth noting too that their unique unit, the Magyar Hussar, has an attack bonus against siege and is a trash unit. So. If you are dealing with siege rams or enemy trebuchets, right, Magyars actually have a pretty nice response to that. And that's going to help your castles do business. So, again, we can factor that in a little bit, but three and a half stars, pretty good. Malay. Oh, Malay. Malay are going to be our first one and a half star sieve. You get masonry, and that's it. You do get siege engineers and heated shot at least, but... That's pretty bad. You're not really getting many other bonuses. Uh, most of the time with the Malay, you tend to see more reliance on bombard cannons, honestly. Um, perhaps one reason being that their castles are not that good. Next up, we have the Malians. And so Malians are going to be pretty interesting here. They're going to go in the three and a half star category, but they're kind of a unique case. They're getting all their HP armor upgrades, which is really important obviously and you do get heated shot but you're missing both bracer and siege engineers and that seems to me to be enough to take them down to the three and a half star level i think of the three and a half stars right they're probably the strongest because they have the hp upgrades but it's still a downgrade next up we have mayans and mayans again it's this kind of the same story with italians lithuanians i believe um you know you get the armor upgrades you know, bracer heated shot, right? But you're missing siege engineers, so we gotta downgrade them there. Next up, we have Mongols. Mongols are also an interesting case. I think I wanna put Mongols in the three and a half star tier list. You're getting masonry and hoardings, bracer, siege engineers, and. You do get Mangadai, which have an attack bonus against Siege, and that can be very strong for stopping Siege Ram pushes or getting out and stopping uh, Trebs. I actually think that if we just took that alone, they could be a four-star sieve because I do think Mangadai are probably better than than uh, Magyar Hussars for stopping Siege Ram pushes just because they tend to be accompanied by Halbs, and Mangadai can, uh, can steer clear of them. But the Mongols like Heated Shot. And that means that they're not going to be able to control water as well. So I think for me, you got to, I got to put them, that to me is going to balance them out just a little bit. I think they're right on the line. It just depends with the power of Mangadai. Um, because you probably don't have a bunch of Mangadai garrison just sitting in your castle because it's a unit you're probably going to have on the field anyways. So if you do get a Siege Ram push, are you going to have enough? It, it's, it's tricky. I mean, you definitely can keep Mangadai hanging around castles to defend it against siege weapons. And that's something that makes Mongols very strong. And so I think the fact they like heated shot, right? We can, I, you know, they're so close to the line heated shot would get them over, but the fact that they miss it, they're still a really strong three and a half stars. Persians, right? Persians are going to keep us in three and a half stars. It's a similar story with the Malians actually, right? You're getting all the armor upgrades and heated shot, but you're missing bracer and siege engineers. So, eh, not so good. So, I mean, well, not so good. If you're, they're close to being a four star, but not quite there. Poles are going to keep us in three and a half stars. We have a lot of these three and, there's a lot of pretty good castles in the game, actually. Um, you're getting masonry and hoardings, right? Siege engineers, bracer. You're just missing heated shot. So it's a pretty similar story in many ways, I think, to the Mongols. Um, Obuk is a nice unit to deal with siege weapons that are coming in. So. Yeah, it seems like a good solid three and a half star sieve for me. 
All right, next up we get to the Portuguese, and the Portuguese are going to finally give us a sieve, I think, that's in the three-star rankings. You miss Hoardings, uh, which is uh, really disappointing, but you're getting Siege Engineer's Bracer and your Trebuchets like, are cheaper on the gold cost, and that's pretty solid. Um, you know, I think that missing Hoardings is really crucial, right? But the cheaper Trebs is nice. That, to me, is enough to put them in that three-star category. Next up, we have the Saracens, and Saracens are going to take us back to three and a half stars, actually. Um, again, it's a pretty similar story to the Poles, right? Hoardings, Masonry, Siege Engineers, Bracer, Treadmill Crane. No heated shot, though. So, good, but not quite good enough to get into the rarefied blue blood air of the four star. Though, we have a number of sieves that are four star sieves, actually, here. So, maybe it's not as rarefied as I mentioned. But, still pretty good. All right, next up, we have the Sicilians and I'm going to put Sicilians at four and a half stars so you're getting masonry to hoardings great siege engineers great bracer great heated shot great treadmill crane really cool too actually the thing with Sicilians that really takes them to the next level is that they're as a sieve bonus their castle building speed is increased by 100 percent this is insane for getting for castle dropping. If you need to get up a quick defensive castle, this is massive, right? You know, establishing castles in a place to control territory before somebody else can get there. Also great. If you're trying to get your castle up and they're trying to get your theirs up, you're going to win it every time. It's fantastic. I think it makes up for the fact that you're not getting quite the HP and armor. In fact, I think it might be the only one in my list that I'm giving four and a half or above that doesn't get all of the HP and armor. The building speed bonus is just so freaking strong. It's probably a three and a half star without it, but with it, taking it up to the next level. All right, now we have the Slavs, and the Slavs are... Well, the Slavs aren't bad. I think the Slavs are going to slide in at the three and a half star level or excuse me the three star level sorry about that uh you're getting masonry and hoardings which is really nice and you get siege engineers which is also nice but you're missing bracer and you're missing heated shot i think it's really really close just when i look at all the other civs in the three and a half star area i see them all as civilizations that either have a lot more hp or they're able to control more of the map. They have more range. I think Slavs are kind of right there in the middle. Uh, you know, maybe like a little above average because you are getting uh, hoardings and you are getting uh, siege engineers, but just not quite on the three and a half level. Next up, we have the Spanish and Spanish. They got to go in the, they got to go five star. Um, you get all the armor HP, heated shot, you are missing Siege Engineers, which is a pretty severe downgrade, but you can put up your castles 30% faster, so not quite as good as the Sicilian bonus, but still pretty solid, which makes your castle dropping potential really, really good. And the fact that you actually can get your blacksmith upgrades without any gold cost with the sieve, I think really helps for getting your range technologies, which probably with Spanish you're not getting typically because you're probably making a lot of units like Conquistadors or the Nightline. It makes it just that much easier to get those ranged upgrades. Um, and I think it's worth not sleeping on it uh, because, you know, when you're in the late game and you're just trying to get your, your castle ranges up, um, it's pretty easy to do with Spanish. So I think they're a five star, uh, but maybe right now one of the more probably... They're probably closer to the line, I think, than than uh, than the other two we've got there. Next up, we have Tatars. Tatars are interesting. I put them in the two-star category. I, to me, I think it's a, a similar story to the Huns, right? Where you only get masonry. You do have... An, but you have incredible trebuchets, right? Your Temurid Siegecraft gives your trebuchets more range. You do have Siege Engineers, though. And you're getting Bracer and Heated Shot. Man, that's so tough. 
you know what? I'm going to let Generosity rule today. I just think the two range Trebs are really, really good. It can enable you to put your castle back a little bit further and still be able to outrange the other your opponent, make it very difficult on them. I think it's the combination of also then getting Siege Engineers and Heated Shot that really does it for me. Whereas you got to remember with Huns, you're not getting you're not getting Siege Engineers. So I think we got to bump to Tars up. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Now, next up are the Teutons. And for me, Teutons are a five-star Civ. You're getting all your armor HP upgrades, Siege Engineers. You don't get Bracer, but the Crenellations technology increases your the range of your castles. So they have, I believe, eight plus five range. That means that they outrange even Bombard Cannons with Siege Engineers. That's a massive upgrade, man. Very massive. You also get free Murder Holes and free Herbal Medicine. So there's really no chance of anybody taking advantage of the fact that you don't have Murder Holes. Um, that'll help you against Siege Ram pushes. Free Herbal Medicine is really good. Also, with Crenellations, it allows the infantry units garrison to fire arrows. They don't contribute that many arrows, but hey, let's say you're making Elite Teutonic Knights, which are also good to defend against ram pushes. You can keep them just garrisoned in your castles before you release, say, a big group of them, and they're improving the damage ability of them. So I think a lot of Teutons really depends on how fast you can get to Crenellations because you do miss Bracer. So, you know, for... Controlling areas, right? Not having Bracer is going to be a big deal. But if you get to Crenellations, right? You overcome that and you're actually doing better. So easy five star. Next up, we have the Turks. Turks are interesting to me. Turks are going to have to be, unfortunately, I think for them, I think they have to be four stars. So you're getting... All your HP armor upgrades, Bracer, Heated Shot, but you're missing Siege Engineers and Herbal Medicine, actually. I think it's comparable to Lithuanians and Mayans and and the rest of them. Yeah, I, th I think I think it's comparable. I'm pretty good with them being a four-star Civ, actually. Next up, we have the Vietnamese. Vietnamese, to me, two-star. You're getting hoardings, but you miss masonry architecture, so... You're lagging a little bit behind. You do at least get Siege Engineers and Bracer and Heated Shot, but still, castles aren't very good. And lastly, we have the Vikings, and Viking castles, I think, are very high quality. I think they're a good four and a half stars. Uh, they don't have any major bonuses or anything like that, but you just basically get everything. All your armor HP, Bracer, Siege Engineers, Heated shot, treadmill crane. You have a good unique unit to take out siege ram pushes. I just think it's like you're missing herbal medicine, which does kind of suck. But your berserkers are healing themselves anyway. <laughs> you're probably making berserks with Vikings, so I don't know. Missing herbal medicine is probably actually not the worst thing for the Civ. It, it's just it's it's kind of like Khmer in that it's like well, you get everything, and the truth is with castles, not a lot of castles get everything pretty much. So. I think for me, right, I'm pretty comfortable putting that four and a half star. Now, through the power of editing magic, right, I'm going to look at the new three sieves, and I'm going to start with the Dravidians, and Dravidians are going to be three stars, right? You get Masonry and Hoardings, which is nice. You get Heated Shot and Bracer, which is nice, helping you control the seas, but you are missing Siege Engineers, and that to me is enough when you compare it to the three and a half star sieves. You know, not a lot of them miss Siege Engineers. And if they do, they have all of the armor upgrades and HP upgrades. And Dravidians don't. So again, it's a little bit above average, but going to be a three star. Now let's move to the Bengalis. Bengalis are going to be a two and a half. You get masonry and architecture, no hoardings, siege engineers, bracer, right? Again, it's kind of the same story with the Burmese, if you look at them. Uh, you're just, you're missing out on hoardings, and hoardings just gives you so much more HP that it's pretty, hoardings is pretty darn important. Lastly, we have the Gujaras, and Gujaras are going to be 
four stars, right? Four star sieve based on the projected tech trees, right? You get all of the armor HP upgrades, bracer, heated shot, right? Treadmill crane, but you are missing siege engineers. And so it's a pretty similar story that we have to our Italians, Lithuanians and Mayan civilizations, right? Um, be a pretty darn good castle, but just a little bit lacking from the top here tier echelon. So that's it, right? That's the tier list. Um, We've, we've gone through, we've added the projected new sieves. They could change over the, over the next, uh, next couple of weeks or so, but that's the tier list, right? So, you know, uh, be curious, like what you think about the, the castles in the game, right? It looks like we have kind of a lot of kind of above average castles, not a lot of terrible castles, but also not a ton of great castles either, right? So pretty rarefied errors at the polls, kind of a normal distribution that we're looking at here, but if you like this video, right, I gotta say, if you wanna like and subscribe, it will help the channel out a lot, lot, lot. And definitely follow the channel because with the new patch, or rather the new expansion coming out, and who knows what other balance changes are in it, we're gonna have a ton of content on the channel and over the next couple of months. So you wanna get in on that. We're gonna be probably even looking again at some of these tier lists as well, uh, maybe even doing our first revision of say 1v1 Arabia. So it's going to get really, really exciting, I think. And, and yeah, so, so be pumped to get there. But with that, I'm Jimmy James 59 and I'll see you out there on the ladder.